In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, mighty name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, mighty name of Jesus, Satan will have to flee. Oh, tell me who can stand before us when we call on that great name, Jesus Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Well, God bless you, Bailey. Good morning. Good morning, Lady Winston. God bless you and Pastor Winston. Good morning, Francine. Good morning, Sister Polk. Praise the Lord, Sister Jan. God bless you, Sister Walker. Praise the Lord, Dr. Haywood. God bless you and Mrs. Haywood. God bless you, Selena. Praise the Lord, Iris. Praise the Lord, Sister McLeod. God bless you, Duchess. Good morning, Bishop and Mother Joseph. God bless you both. It was a joy to speak to you last night. God bless you, Sister Joyner. God bless you, Sabrina. Good morning, Pastor and Lady Crooms. God bless you both. Good morning, Sister Hedrick. Good morning, Brother Paul. God bless you, Sister Burnett. God bless you, Missionary Leah. Praise the Lord to you. God bless you, Mother Street. God bless you, Sister Miriam. God bless you, Sister Hedrick. Good morning, Katrina. God bless you, my dear friend. God bless you, Sister Frederick. Praise the Lord, Sister McWhite. Good morning, Missionary Johnson. God bless you. Good morning, brother and sister Stokes and the entire Stokes family. God bless all of you. Good morning, Deacon Davis. God bless you and Mother Barbara. Praise the Lord to you both. God bless you, Sister Sarah. Praise the Lord. Marlene, God bless you. Janice, God bless you. Sister Gordon, praise the Lord. Sister Chambliss, God bless you. Deacon Briggs, we continue to pray for you. God bless you. Good morning, Sister Dykes. Good morning, Sister Petlar. Good morning, Jeannie. God bless you. Good morning, Sylvia. God bless you. Good morning, Good morning, Sister Stimson. Good morning, Sister Carsetta. God bless you, Sister Cleckley. Good morning, Tammy and Jesse. Good morning, Sister Jean. Praise the Lord to you, Sister Kenlock. God bless you, Mother Gill. Praise the Lord, Sister Cheek. God bless you, Elder Bailey. God bless you, Sister Ned. Well, praise the Lord and good morning, everybody, and welcome to the morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. And as always, it's an honor, a privilege, and a pleasure to be able to spend a few moments with you with a biblical meditation and in prayer for more things have been wrought by prayer than the world will ever know. And we continue to be encouraged by the many praise reports that come forth each day. People who are being strengthened, people who are being healed, people who are being blessed materially, God saving and encouraging and rebuilding people through the function of prayer. And yes, my friend, prayer works and prayer is changing lives every day. I'm thanking God for that. I'm thanking God for that knowledge, that knowing that I can turn to the Lord in prayer. And I thank God for this fellowship of believers, people who gather from everywhere, just thanking God and praying together and just reading the word together is such a joy because God brings us together in prayer. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for all of you today. As always, if you have a prayer request, please place it. If you're on Facebook in the comment section, or you can inbox Reginald Davis or inbox Refuge Temple Church. If you're on Instagram and you have a prayer request, you can place it in the comment section on this live feed or you can direct message
message, Pastor RJD, Pastor RJD. And if you are on the conference call and you have a prayer request, please feel free to text 336-567-5358. That's 336-567-5358. And we will add your prayer request to the prayer list in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I believe God hears and answers our prayers. Um, let's go to the word. We're going to move today into the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter number one. We're going to move into this book of Hebrews, which I believe is one of the most profound um, writings of the New Testament um, that talks to us so much about um, doctrine and life and the um, image of God, understanding the totality of who God is. Um, it was written and, and you know, it's, it's ascribed traditionally to Paul. Um, however, there is some dispute as to whether or not Paul wrote the book. Um, in fact, there were a number of people perhaps that um, they tried to attribute it to Barnabas, to Silas, to Apollos, to Luke, to Philip, to Priscilla and Aquila. There's a number of people that are possible authors of this book and it's really unknown because even as it relates to how Paul opened most of his epistles and he would open them with his own name. Hebrews is not open that way. Um, some of it sounds like Paul. Some of it sounds different from Paul. So the writer is an oftentimes when I talk about um, Hebrews, I'll refer to um, Paul, but sometimes I'll just say the writer because it is disputed as to who the writer of Hebrews was. But we know the author of this book ultimately is God. It is an inspired epistle that is written primarily to Hebrew Christians, but to Hebrews and to the entire world. And so there's so many principles that I think are applicable that as we walk through this book, God is going to open up revelation for us to better understand his word, to better understand him, and to better understand our place in the kingdom of God. And so as a companion, if you want to um, on your own, read the book of Leviticus. You can also do that because there's a lot of references to the priesthood and to Levitical law in Hebrews that might be easier to understand if you go and look at Leviticus as well. So it's, it's a powerful book. And I believe it's going to bless us as we begin to read and unpack this text um, as we go. So we're in Hebrews chapter 1 this morning. And I want you to notice, if you would, verses 1 through 4. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4. The Bible says, God, who at sundry times and as divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, have in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he have appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels, as he have inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Obtained a more excellent name than they. And I want to discuss this morning with you for a few moments the expressed image of God. The express image of God. Um, this is one of the reasons why um, the authorship of Paul is somewhat disputed because it doesn't address um, itself as Paul's typical letters and it doesn't um, open up the same way Paul. He would always say grace and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. He, the, the writer here in Hebrews goes right in to the text and says God. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past. God has always tried to connect with humanity. Um, from the beginning, man's creation was after the mindset that God wanted a being with will, a being with spirit, to be able to willingly connect with him. He made the world for man. He made everything in the world for man. And then he made 
man. And the purpose of God making humanity was so that there would be someone that would willingly love, worship, and connect with God. Somebody that um, God could love, God could bless, and in turn, be, be that person would offer worship, sacrifice, and obedience to God. And so all through time that we know the story, man sinned, man fell. But here is the love of God. Even though man fell into sin, God did not dismiss man. Yes, he put Adam and Eve out of the garden. Yes, death became the plague that would follow man. Yes, out of the ground, man would have to till his living and live by the sweat of his brow. All of that was true. And yes, man was removed from the active presence of God. But yet here is God, hallelujah, continuing to reach out to man. Here is God doing everything possible to connect with man, to know man, to love man, to share with man so that man would glorify God and so that man would connect other men to God. This is God doing it. You see it all the way through the scripture that even after Adam and Eve fell, God still spoke to them. All through biblical history, we have the prophets. And that's what he says here. In diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. God would breathe on to somebody. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, the, the, the prophets of the Old Testament. God would breathe upon them, speak to them, inspire them. And all of this was to get a revelation to man. God wants man, oh hallelujah, to know him. I'm going to say that again. God wants man to know him. God wants man to have fellowship with him. Above everything else, God wants you to love and to know him. God wants you to worship him because you know him. Not because somebody makes you or entices you musically or does something to control you and to shame you into worship. God wants you to worship him because you know him. And so all through the scripture, here is God making himself known, hallelujah, through the prophets, but it was to connect all of humanity. The selection of Israel as a nation was simply so that there would be a people in the earth that would represent God. There would be a people in the earth that would speak for God. There would be a people in the earth that was set apart, holy and sanctified unto God once again so that God could be revealed in the earth. So over and over again, here is God trying to connect with man. Here it is over through the eons of time, through the timeless centuries, man God trying to reveal himself to man. And so he did it first through the prophets. But then the Bible says in these last days. And the last days started with the revelation of Jesus Christ in the flesh. That was the beginning of the last days. When the Messiah came into the world as that baby born in that manger, walked among men, that was the beginning of what we call the last days. And the last days will extend until we arrive at the great white throne and the advent of the new heaven and the new earth. But in all of this, here is God revealing himself and in these last days has spoken to us by his son. Now, the sonship of God is one of the best ways for us to understand what God is trying to do. But I don't want us to get so caught up in the sonship that we lose who Jesus Christ is as the son of God. He says, by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, the one that would receive all things, and by whom also he made the worlds. Let me follow this now. Jesus Christ is eternal with the father. Let me say it again. Jesus Christ is eternal with the Father. He's not an afterthought of the Father. He didn't come after the Father. Sometimes our church rhetoric um, lends itself to think that Jesus came as an afterthought. But from the beginning of time, hallelujah, he was one with the Father. The Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That means you cannot separate Jesus Christ from God. 
You can't divide Jesus Christ from God. He is the expressed image of God. We're coming to that. But he is the expressed image of God. And this is what the Bible says. He was appointed heir of all things. That means he's the executor of the will of God. He is the um one that carries out the will of God, the heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. When God said, let there be light, Jesus was there. When God said, let there be a firmament, Jesus was there. The Bible says in John, all things were made by him, the word, Jesus, and without him was not anything made that was made. Jesus just didn't show up in the manger. He was God from the very beginning of time. He was God from ever everlasting to everlasting he is God who have who being the brightness of his glory he is the expressed image he is what we see when we see God you say well Bishop how can you say that because Jesus Christ himself said he that seeth me seeth the father that if you're going to see God if you're going to see the father you have to see him through the son which is Jesus Christ because he's the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Now, either Jesus Christ is a fraud or a usurper or a blasphemer, or he is one with God. He's one with God. He's one with God. You can't have God without Jesus, and you can't have Jesus without God because he's the expressed image of God. And the Bible says he upholdeth all things by the word of his power. We know that God holds the earth, everything, simply by his word. The Bible says he spoke, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. He hung the earth on the hinges of nothingness. That was the express word of God. That was Jesus. That was God. God, one and the same, speaking life into the existence of humanity, speaking life, speaking the birds, speaking the ferment, speaking the stars and the sun and the planets, all of this by the expressed image of God. And the Bible says not only did he do that, but look at verse 3, who he, who he, when he had by himself purged our sins. Jesus Christ is the propitiation of the sacrifice on behalf of our sins. He's the savior of the world. He took away our sins by the blood of his cross. He delivered us, hallelujah, hey God, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are healed. Jesus Christ, hallelujah, the, who purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. He sits at the right hand because the right hand is the place of power. The right hand is the place of authority. The right hand is the place of dominion. But notice he sat down. Now I need to make this clear. He sat down because the, his work as the priest finished at the cross. Let me say that again. He sat down. Now in the tabernacle, and we're going to talk a lot about the tabernacle as we go through this um, book, but in the tabernacle, there were no chairs. There were no seats because the priest's work was not done. He went in day after day. He went in year after year. He went in month after month offering sacrifice and he could not sit down because his work was not done. But when Jesus took his own blood and laid it on the mercy seat, not the mercy seat in Jerusalem, but the mercy seat in glory, the Bible says he sat down. Oh, that means that the work is finished. The work of your redemption, the work of my redemption, the work of your deliverance is finished. Oh my God, that's why Jesus sat down. You can't sit down until your work is done. You can't sit down until your work is finished. But when your work is done, because he died, that's why when he hung on the cross, Jesus says, it is finished. And Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Why? Because the work was done done. The work was done. So he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels. The angels were created and they were created for the glory of God. They were created to serve God. They were created to worship God. The heaven and the glory of God is filled with the angels, but Jesus was made better than the angels. And because he was made better, because he is God manifested in the flesh, he has a more excellent name. He has a more excellent name. Oh God, the angels have names. We don't know all of the names. We, we've heard of Gabriel. We've heard of Michael. We've heard of Raphael. 
But you know what? There's no deliverance in any of those names. You can call the names of those angels and guess what? Nothing will happen. But if you call the name of Jesus Christ, oh, hallelujah, that at that name, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess. He has that more excellent name. Oh my God. Why? Because he's the express image of God. So when you call Jesus, you're calling Father, you're calling Son, you're calling Holy Ghost, you're calling Alpha, Omega, beginning and end, first and last. You're calling Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Shema. You're calling all of that. Jehovah Tiskanu, Jehovah Rapha, all of that is wrapped up in the name of Jesus. Oh, Shataye, that's why demons tremble at the very mention of that name, because you're not just calling the Son of God in, as a detachment from God, you're calling God himself, because God was in Christ reconciling the word, Ishanaba, unto himself. God is the deliverer. God is the way maker, and his name, oh God, the name that we use to express, to invoke his power, to invoke his authority, to invoke who he is, is Jesus Christ. That name, that's more excellent. That's why, oh God, there's a lot of religions, and there's a lot of faiths, and there's a lot of expressions of worship, but there's nothing like the name of Jesus. You can call Muhammad, but there's no deliverance there. You can call Allah, and Allah is not the Arabic name for God, because Allah is not God. But when you call that name Jesus, something great is going to happen in your life because he is the expressed hey, Shama. hey God he is the expressed image of God we're just getting started and I'm so excited because God's gonna reveal more of himself as we walk our way through this book of Hebrews God bless you my brothers and sisters let's go before the Lord in prayer hallelujah my gracious God I love you I adore you. I bless you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your love, and your kindness. Lord, you continue to show yourself faithful to us. And we are constantly grateful to you. I'm thanking you for waking up this morning. Hallelujah. I'm thanking you for being in my right mind. I'm thanking you, hey God, for being able to prepare myself and being able, my God, to join with my brothers and sisters from all over the world. Jesus, I love you today. Hey, Shandorobo Siatanaye, and I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise because I know who you are. Oh God, you are the king. King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the great I am. Oh my God, you are the savior, the deliverer, the keeper. And God, I'm so grateful to you, Lord, because I know you. And I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are joining me from all over the world at this moment of prayer. And I'm asking you in your precious name, if you would bless everybody on this line right now. God, send your anointing. Hey, God, all the way through this line. Send your power all the way through this prayer line for somebody that needs you right now. Your people need strength. Your people need grace. Your people need help today. And God, I'm trusting you that you will touch us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that you would strengthen us and that you would grant the petitions that we have before you, God. So many are praying for spouses and children and loved ones and grandchildren, God, to be delivered, to be freed, and to be blessed. And Lord, I'm turning to you now. Oh God, to grant those petitions now, to deliver, to destroy yokes, to destroy the works of the enemy right now. Every plan of the devil, my God, uprooted now in the name of Jesus and free your people now. Oh Free your sons, free your daughters. Deliver somebody today that stands in need of 
deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God, we're praying today for every name that's on the prayer list, every name in the prayer book, every name that's in the chat, every name that's been sent by messenger, by text message. God, we're believing you, God, for deliverance today. We're believing you to do what we know only you are able to do. God, we're praying today for Elder Leon and Lady Rachel White. We're praying for Claudia Houston. We're praying for Pastor Dalberry, Lady Dalberry. We're praying for Barry Jackson. We're lifting up Bishop and Lady Staten today. We're praying for Bishop and Mother Joseph today. We're praying, my God, for Pastor and Lady Crooms, Pastor and Lady Hargrove, Pastor and Lady Winston today in the name of Jesus. We're praying for the Amerson family, the Mingo family, the Jones family, the Watson family. We're lifting up D'Angelo Chavez, God, that you would deliver. We're praying for the Hayward family. We're praying for Trixie Norris today, for the Williams grandchildren, for Billy McIntyre. God, we lift up, my God, Nancy and Barbara today. God, we pray right now, oh God, for Tommy, oh God, and Tamara today. We pray for Stacy and Trayvon today, God, that you would deliver, that you would free by the power and the presence of the Holy Ghost. God, we're praying today for Sinclair Todman. We're praying for William Chestnut, for the Brown family, for Ethel Dunbar, for the Stanley family. We're praying today for Juliet Johnson, for Mother Johnson. We're praying for the Clay Flagler family. We're praying for Florence. We're praying for Linda today. Denise Lamont. We're lifting up Brandis today. We're praying for Wendy Williams and her father. We're praying for Crystal Poole and her husband. We're praying for Sherry Neesmith today. We're praying for Titus, for Tanaya. We're praying for Kay Grooms. We're praying for the Mount Olive Deliverance Temple. We're praying for Greater Refuge Temple of New York City. My God, we're praying for refuge in Jamaica. We're praying for Greater Refuge in Henderson. We're praying for Refuge Temple in Burlington, God. We're praying for St. John's, for Macedonia. We're praying for all the churches everywhere that you would bless, God. Remember the Moore family. Lord, remember Kimberly Clark. Remember Denise Johnson today. Remember Linda. Remember the Powell family, the Abbott family, the Perry family. Remember Bryce Hill today. Remember Wendell. Remember the True Holiness Church. Oh, God, remember, oh, my God, Elder Andre Walker today. Remember Deacon Glean. Remember those that might be the victims of domestic violence. My God, people everywhere that need a blessing, God, stretch out your hand. Stretch out your hand today, God. Lord, to deliver, to set free. Oh, God, to bring deliverance wherever it is needed. God, we're praying today for the sick everywhere. We lift up my cousin Manny this morning. We pray for Mary Fallon. We pray for Stacy James today. We pray for Amy. We pray for Dr. Haywood and his recovery. We pray, oh God, for Mother Jill. We pray for Mother Pride. We lift up Mother Chambers, Deacon Ganey today. We're praying for Victoria. We're lifting up Darlene, Dana, Mother Lorene Walker today. We're praying for Apostle Mario Davis. We're praying for Maurice Powell today, for Bobby Gates, for Gail Richardson. We're praying for Danielle. We're praying for Mother Barbara Davis. We're praying for Reese Shelton today, Sister Shirley Johnson, Anaya Hatcher this morning. We're praying for Natasha Spring. We're praying for Ohima. We're lifting up, my God, Bishop Gregory Wilder. Everybody that's sick today, God, remember Bishop Alfonso Brooks, Mother Shirley Clark, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Lady Andrea Maxwell, God, touch and heal. Remember my God, hallelujah. Oh God, brother, oh God, Wiggins today, brother and mother Sherrod, Deacon and mother Garland, my God, touch them with your healing hand. My God, remember, my God, Pastor Jackson and Pastor Carr, because we know that you're a healer. My God, stretch out your hand, oh God, to deliver and to do what we know you are able to do. God, I'm praying today that you will remember, my God, Elder Tyson and Elder Smith, God. Lord, remember Mother Foster, Henry J, and Brother Cliff. God, remember them, oh God, with your healing hand. Remember, my God, Mother Tanaj, Mother Holman today, Missionary Simmons. God, strengthen and heal them now. Remember, my God, in the name of Jesus, Catherine, Cynthia, and Duchess, Lord. Lord, touch and heal because we know that you're able. God, remember Marlette, Maurice today. Remember Tony today. Remember Chris today. Everybody that's sick everywhere. God, walk into every hospital, every ICU ward, COVID ward, cancer ward. God, walk into the dialysis unit today. My God, walk into ICU and deliver in every rehab center, in every nursing home. God, even go into hospice, my God, and touch and heal because we know that you're able. Stretch out your mighty hand. Stretch out your mighty hand, my God, to deliver and heal. God, we pray today. 
for grieving people everywhere. We lift up, oh God, Denise McLean today. We pray for the family of Brother Baldwin. We pray for Juanita Morant Brown. We pray for the Peters family, for the Swain Andrews family, for the Boyce family, for Christina Lett and family. God, we're praying for grieving people everywhere. God, remember the Bynums, the Taylors, the Lloyds. Remember the Carters. Remember the Giles family today. God, we lift up Anita and the Brian Hopkins family. We pray for Margie and the McLean Melvin family. We pray for the Rant some family today. We pray for Brenda and the Allen McNeely family. God, we're praying, oh God, for people everywhere that are grieving losses. God, we pray for Monique and Sean and the Gary Porter family. God, we lift up the people everywhere. My God, that are grieving losses. Touch them, strengthen them. We pray for the Allen Williams family and we lift up Trell and Ryan. We pray for the Clark family. We lift up Tommy and Michelle. Lord, people everywhere that stand in need. My God, stretch out your hand. Oh God, your healing touch emotionally. Your healing touch, my God, in the spirit God that is broken because of the loss. We pray for your healing. Well, God, remember the Mays, the Dunlaps, the Purdies, the Sneeze, the Winninghams. Remember the Middletons, the Taylors. Remember the Washington Fields family. Every grieving family everywhere. God, touch them. Remember Deacon Briggs today, God. Remember, my God, the Felix family, the Zapata family. Remember the Gleans, the Taylors. Oh, God, remember, my God, the Mannix, the Boudrums today. My God, remember Remember them in a special way. Remember the Arthur family, the Phillips family, every grieving family. God, I pray today for the entire body of Christ, every apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. God, I'm praying today for every, hallelujah, every bishop and elder, every first lady, every pastor's child, every mother and missionary. My God, I'm praying today for every minister and deacon, every young person in the church. My God, I'm praying today for every musician, singer, and psalmist. Help the church to know you. Help the church to understand you. Help the church to declare you in the earth that the world might know that you are Savior, Lord, Deliverer, Healer, Provider. Oh, God, reveal yourself to us. Oh, show yourself, God, by your work. Show yourself by your deliverance. Show yourself by your hand working in the earth today. God, I pray today for first responders and essential workers everywhere. Firemen, EMTs, policemen, God, cover and protect them. I pray for all school employees and all students everywhere, God, cover and protect. And Lord, even, oh God, as these numbers go up and down, and even as we hear of another variant being exposed to the population, God, I'm praying that you would cover the land. Lord, protect those who are uninfected and heal those who have been infected. Lord, I'm praying for those even with that long time of syndrome from COVID. Oh, Oh God, even months and years after the disease, oh God, is lingering on some people. But I'm praying for the breaking of that yoke today and the healing. I'm praying today for the people of Ukraine. I'm praying for your protection. I'm praying that you would touch the heart of Putin, my God. That you would guide the hand of the leaders of the nations of the world. Oh my God, that you would pull us back from this abyss. Oh God, that you would deliver, oh God, and protect the innocent today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord, and heal this land. Oh God, all over the world, there's a need for healing, not just from sickness, but Lord, heal from sin, heal from hatred, heal from violence, heal from brokenness, heal from abuse, God, in the name of Jesus, heal from racism, from sexism, from all forms of injustice and prejudice. My God, heal and use the church to make the difference in the earth today. God, bless us and keep us and cover us with your blood. And as you deal with us, oh God, we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Everybody on this line, come on and let's give God praise right now. Everybody on this line, let's give God the glory. Come on, because we know who he is. Hallelujah. Because we know who he is, let's give God praise. Let's give God glory. Let's give God thanksgiving today. Hallelujah. Because we know who he is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. This is my declaration today. Jesus Christ is the express image of God. Jesus Christ is the express image 
of God. One of the purposes that the, for which the church exists is to reveal Jesus Christ to the world. He said, upon this rock, the revelation of who he is, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus Christ is the express image. He's the Messiah. Oh my God. He's Lord. He's Savior. He's the one true God, Jesus Christ. And our job is to make that known. Hallelujah. To know Know him and to make him known. That's our responsibility to know him or and to make him known. Hallelujah. So that people know where to turn. They can run to Jesus for salvation, for deliverance. They can run to Jesus. Hallelujah. For the needs of their lives because he is the express image of God. God bless you this morning. Thank you so much for being with us today. I'm trusting that the biblical meditation and prayer has blessed you and that your Friday is off to a wonderful start. Look, you can stay connected to Refuge Temple all day today. This prayer service is available on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. We thank God for those who join us by conference call each morning. God bless you. And please share with others so they can know about the prayer and they can join in this prayer. We can also stay connected through our podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Spotify. And once again, all of that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if today blessed you, please share it with somebody else so they can hear and be blessed as well. Our radio broadcast airs every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Every day, Monday through Friday at 11.30 a.m. on GregoryGospel.com. Let me thank every person that seeds, souls, gives to this ministry. We thank God for you. Your gifts help us to do the things that we need to do. And if you want to be a blessing, you can mail a gift to Refuge Temple Church, P.O. Box 355 to Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. That's Refuge Temple, P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, 27215. If you want to give online, you can go to our website, which is Refuge Temple, in is in North, C is in Carolina.com, and make your gift on our donate page. If you have the GiveLify app, you can just type in Refuge Temple, Burlington, look for the picture of the church, and make your gift there. Or if you have Cash App, our Cash App is dollar sign, the number one. One refuge dollar sign the number one refuge and we thank you we thank you for your giving but we thank you most of all for being with us each day because God is blessing because the people of God are praying so please please my brothers and sisters continue to pray please pray for me pray for Lady Davis pray for our children pray for my father pray for my sisters pray for my in-laws my nieces my nephews our entire family just lift us up in prayer please pray for refuge temple that God would continue to bless us and please pray for one another and for every congregation that's associated with this prayer that God's favor and blessings might be upon the people. Look, God bless you. You have a fantastic day. The grace of God be with you. Until next time, this is Pastor Davis. Shalom, shalom.